No need for you to wear your coat to take it off. Your school days. Love them? I was wondering about black hole formation because I was laying in bed last night and I started thinking about how 99% of everything is empty space. Yeah, I, I don't like to dwell on that because that's quite worrying. Or loathe them. We know diameter is circumference divided by pi. What is pi? Where did it come from? You never forget them. All right, clear off, scumbags. At this school in Essex, 160 students are in their final and most important year, and their head teacher has grand ambitions. The mantra that we use is nobody leaves without enough qualifications to make the next step in their life. But that's easier said than done. Sir, mm. I feel like crying for no reason. Is that normal? Um, what, your age, yeah. They're teenagers. Oh my god! Emotional. In the nicest possible way, it's a girl. Excitable. It's the laughing. <laughs> Always laughing. And a constant challenge. You will never, ever come up against people who are as calm and patient as we are for the rest of your life. Oh, how does he do You are such a funny. <laughs> <laughs> this series reveals what life is really like in a modern secondary school. Feeling bruised. For the teachers. We are trying to deliver you a future. I think we have a responsibility to give them the right chances. You have no idea how much <laughs> I like teaching you. You have no idea. And today's kids, at the very start of adult life. How you do this year will determine what path you take in life. <laughs> Okay. Right, so Molly refused to stop talking, so you've been asked to stop talking, he didn't. No. So then you were asked oh to move. Oh, my Lord. He stopped. Oh, why do teachers always do this? Were you asked to stop talking? The whole class, but everyone's yeah, still carrying I'm, on talking. I'm not, okay, so were you asked to stop talking? Not me, personally. Molly is 14. Did you no, stop talking? No, no one stopped talking. Okay. Were you asked to move? Yeah. Yes, and did you say, yeah, in a minute? I said, I'm just finishing this sentence. She is one of Year 10's brightest students and is sitting six of her GCSEs a year early. You need to recognise that, unfortunately, you live in a world where you don't get to call the shots at the moment. Well... One day, when you leave school, you can. Oh, my God! Thing... Like, I know I've uh, been horrible, cos I have been horrible, but I just... I don't know, it's just... I don't mean to be, it just comes out. I got Tourette's or something. Now, Molly. I'm going home. I'm not calling your mum. If you leave school, you are truanting. I don't want to go in back to okay. that lesson. I'm going to leave you with that because I've got more important things to do than stand here and argue with someone who won't see reason, OK? Oh! Going home! I don't purposely try and be naughty, but it's just hard sometimes. I hope that I can learn to deal with things. You think the teachers like you? I, I think some of them do. I'm, I'm getting very worried about this weather. I'm very fearful we'll end up without not having a game of rugby on Saturday. I'm very, very fearful. Morning. Are you coming through? There you go. Thank you. Good, I think. I just hope today is not a repeat of yesterday. Just one of those never ending. Nothing particularly terrible, but just one after the other, after the other, after the other, after the other. Just one of those. Well, let's hope so, Miss. I'm sure you will as well. For Deputy Head Mr. Drew, serious discipline issues repeatedly end up at his door. I take a seat there, please. I think I need to exclude Adina. Mm -hmm. She was. In her lesson, and um, she saw Vinny, she came running out. Stan said, what are you doing? Get back in. And she called him a prick. He said she called him a fucking prick. She just said, I just called him a prick. Why exactly is he a penis? Why? Why is he a male sexual organ? Why? That's a really strong term of person that... Like, like, the way you ask him out. 
We don't have to worry about the words we use because they just come out absolute rubbish. Would you call your grandmother a prick? You would call your, one of your grandparents a prick. No. So you possess self-control. Do you think some of the um, students would think you're mean? Yeah. Of course they would. They think I was mean. They think I was unfair. They think I was out of order. They think I was pig-headed. They think I was selfish. And of course, I'm sure they do. Of course they do. Because they're young people. And they think I was unfair. Because in their mind, what they've done isn't a problem. And in their mind, what they've done, they shouldn't even be being told off for. You know when you get a job after you leave school? Yeah. What are you going to do if your boss is someone like me? Don't work here. What if it's the only job? There's two and a half million people unemployed in this country at the moment. What are you going to do if your boss is like me? Sign on. <laughs> Stevie. Stevie? Mm. Turn around and look at me, please. You have just undermined my conversation with <coughs> Adina. It is utterly inappropriate of you to laugh when I'm having a conversation with a student. Or you could just not laugh. No, it's fine. I just thought it was funny. It would lighten the mood, you know? Great, because the mood needs lightening, doesn't it? Yeah. I will accept you didn't call him an effing prick. In the interests of harmony, Adina. I'm not entirely sure whether I believe you or not, to be honest, but I'll accept that you didn't call him that, so I don't have to exclude you. But I'm not having members of staff called a prick. Afternoon school, Miss, please. OK. Lovely, thank you. You can go and sit over there. Number four, please. Hello, Mr. West. Good morning, bright and sunny. Can you send me home if I throw a snowball at you? <laughs> the point I've reached with Molly is that the minute I tell her something she doesn't like, it's just because I'm not going to do it. I'm going to do it. And then she'll start to try. She, and she's really funny because she'll try and initiate an argument, and I don't argue. Mm. What on earth is going to happen? She looks like she's going to go down at a rate of knots, doesn't she? Yeah. All right, Molly, you come over here with your report, thanks. Because of her behaviour, Molly has been on report to her head of house, Miss Warnken, for the last seven weeks. <clears throat> right, let's start with, you didn't follow my instructions, you didn't go back to your lesson period three, you drew into period four, you didn't see me at lunchtime, you didn't see me at the end of the day, you didn't see me this morning. Now, the school have decided to get much tougher with her. Today's your last day on report to me. You'll be going up to Mr Drew oh, next week. Not... You can say that as much as you like, but you're going up to Mr I'm Drew next week. There. You're choosing to take the hard road. No, I'm not. OK. Unfortunately, Molly, you've left me with nowhere else to go. Well, okay. no one's given me a chance. Oh. I'm sorry, I've given you seven weeks' worth of chance. So don't even try that. I've given you seven weeks. I don't want to go and report to Mr Drew. I'm not going to argue with you about it. That's what's going to happen. If a child has reached the stage when they report to me, they've been through six weeks of report to their tutor and their head of house. They really have reached a problem stage, so they need a complete reappraisal of what they're doing in school. Any failure to come to me just means intended solution straight away. As far as I'm concerned, part of the deal of being a report is you meet the rules. It's day one of Molly being on report to Mr Drew. OK, let's have some nice crystal clear understanding of exactly how this works, OK? You have failed on report to a number of people. You are therefore on report to me. I'm not interested in why you can't behave, OK? You need to look at me while I'm talking to you. I just put your bag on the floor. Good. Push the knot on your tie up. And don't fold your arms while you're talking to me. Don't fold your arms while you're talking to me. Don't beat your hands in your pockets. Do you we'll just hold them there. Such is life. So is our conversation uncomfortable. A lot of young people do seem to quite struggle with the concept of boundaries. The word no, this is a fantasy world to them. Because you, you tell them they can't do certain things and they look at you as if to say, well, why can't I do it? When I speak to you, I expect you to speak to me properly. I expect you to look at me and I expect you to talk to me with decency and manners and respect. 
you are failing to pass your GCSEs at a standard that you should be passing them at. And the reason you're failing to do that is because you're not behaving properly, you're not respecting people properly, and you're not respecting yourself properly, and you're not enabling yourself to be a success. So your hands out your pockets while you're talking to me. I wish you every success over the next four weeks, Molly. I would like to have a pain-free existence with you. Please allow that to happen. Is your sister here today? I don't know. No, N2 plus H2 goes to NH3. You need to balance it. Nitrogen plus hydrogen makes ammonia. Charlotte is 15 and in the year above her sister Molly. More that way. I'm just looking at you, Charlotte. You just need to stop doing it. Charlotte's in the top set for all her subjects and, like her sister, struggles with discipline. We need to try and reduce the pressure somehow. You're wasting my time again, so get out. What? I said, you're wasting my time and everyone else's, so leave. Do you know how selfish you're being by stopping everyone else? Well, actually, it's you because you're not teaching them. It's not me. That's incredibly rude, and you're going to get a serious detention for that, Charlotte. OK, so we've got our four moulds of gas over here. Charlotte, come here. Why don't you go to lesson? Because I'm not going to lesson. I hate this school. Like, stupid little office. Shut up, Charlotte. Ain't it true, though, sir? Why Shut don't... up, Charlotte! Guys, guys, guys. Can you not add to my woes with both of you no. by shouting and arguing with each other? Because I tell you what, it's hard enough for me to deal with you as separate people. Yeah, but I ain't being funny. Sh they are both exceptionally bright young ladies, and Molly is still in a year ten and could do exceptionally well if she started to cooperate. Oh, God sake! You have a responsibility not to allow those young people to just throw those opportunities away. So you have to stand your ground. We were both young when I first saw you. I closed my eyes. Why are you talking to me? Mr. Drew? Can we tell me some new films from this year? Uh, oh, uh, what was it called? The, the film remake of Fantasia, but what was it called? Don't cut me off. Listen to what I have to say, and then you can speak. Give me them. I spoke to you and your I'm friend. Trying to think what it was called. And you decided to stand behind me, laughing and pointing at him. The office that I share is a very—it's a very confusing place at times. Because you think it's funny. Trying to think on earth it was called. Sorcerer's Apprentice. Are you really sorry? Sorry, I didn't want to have that conversation no, with no, Cordell. It's all right. It's no problem. Because it does fulfil a massive variety of roles, from being the place that is the highest level of punishment short of being excluded, to being the place where people just come seeking help. It's kind of awfully behind uh, wherever, waiting to light up, and I just nailed them. Oh, it's hiding right. behind the barn. You see the situation, and automatically, you're put, it's like... I, if you saw it as like a computer, as if you're pulling in like 50 different bits of data, and what you're doing is you're pulling in the situation in front of you. Is the kid on their own? Are they in a group? Which member of staff has brought them to me? Is this a member of staff who I know has already tried seven things with them, or is this a member of staff who's just gone like that, straight away? Is this a child who's been in trouble a lot recently? Is it a child who hasn't? Is it a child who has a history, a past? What are their peer group? How many times have they been in this office? Are they new? Are they so? All these things. And what you're doing is that's the information you hold in your head. And therefore, you do judge children as individuals. Of course you do. Good morning. Report, please. It's Molly's second week of being on report to Mr Drew. I've got a slight dilemma. I've got my report. Don't worry about that. This means signing in with him throughout the day when she's not in lessons. You seem to be here looking clean and smart. Yeah, that's the problem. I haven't got blazer. You're not wearing your coat in your lessons. I'm not taking it off, sir. Okay, then you'll need to just stay here, then. No! Until you agree that you're going to take your coat off, you're not going anywhere. I don't know what it is, but we can get on, but I think we're quite similar people. We're quite argumentative, and we'd both like to get our point of views across. And if we don't, we won't stop till we do. Hello. Do you think that you have a blazer which would fit more No, I'm not she wearing, wearing a blazer. It, but I just need to go for the process of you telling me you think you have one so that I can suggest to Molly that that is what she can do. Miss Connolly is on I'm her way out with a blazer. I'm not wearing something else's skanky blazer. No, that's absolutely fine. Oh! Ah! 
Are you going to wear one of those two blazers that Miss Conley has bought for you? I personally don't feel comfortable. No, no, that wasn't the question I asked. Have you decided whether or not to be cooperative yet, or are you seriously going to waste your entire school day simply in order to prove that you can do as you want? Right, leave your coat off, you go to your lesson. Please, can I take my coat? Off you it's go. It's really cold. Please do not now turn around and waste any more of my time. You're being pathetic about a coat. I don't agree. I am in charge. Whether you like yeah, it or not... It would be nice if you actually asked people how they felt about it. Have you ever thought of asking me how I feel about the fact... You tell everyone. ...the third day running this week, I am doing no work whatsoever to make this school a better place. All I have done for three days is deal with stroppy teenagers oh, who won't do as they're no, told. Now you're abusing us. I'm sorry. What? I think he enjoys my company secretly. Sometimes he takes it as a joke or sometimes he gets all angry about it, so it just makes me laugh. But I know how to push his buttons easily. It's out of order, yeah? This school are horrible to all the pupils. OK, I'm sorry that you think that. No, but no one does anything, do they? Because I don't agree. Well, that's you. I'm sure if you took a little survey about how many people feel uncomfortable coming to this school because okay. the teachers treat them very unfairly, right. then you'd have a very large amount of people okay. ticking that box. Then I suggest that you find yourself another school where you feel more comfortable. I'm going to make a petition. Decided. Right. Okay. And send it to Mr. Goddard. Okay, brilliant. Okay. Can you make sure you put at the top, dear Mr. Goddard, I and we, the underside, disapprove of the way that you run your school? It's a bit of me the kind of things, am I just some kind of figure of entertainment for you? Am I just some kind of entertaining little man who sits there behind his desk and says, do this, and actually it's all part of your fun and your game in the world? And then I think, well, if that was true, is that okay? And I think, well, maybe that is okay, because while they're doing it to me, they're not doing it to anyone else. So, okay, that's all right. And they're not damaging anyone else's lessons. So, okay, we'll soak it up a bit and we'll suck it up and take it on the chin. Thank you very much for your hard work today. You're always a pleasure to teach. <laughs> This is what I have written in your planner. Molly chose not to go to two of her lessons today, Wednesday, because she would not follow my instructions about her uniform. I am therefore setting her two times one hour truancy detentions to be served on Thursday the 2nd and Friday the 3rd of December. I will also be ringing your mum to tell her this decision. Oh. Excuse me. Come on, let's have a lecture now. Stand there. Please place that chair back in the booth. Oh, what is she doing? Thank you. Shut up. Thank you. You mug. Thank you. So long. Thanks for today, sir. I don't need all of you lot staring. I need you turning around, sitting, facing the correct way. Now. She's in a pattern of behaviour, like a train going down the tracks, and she lacks the ability to change it. I'm always an emotional mess. One minute I'm happy, and the next minute I'm sad. I'm always angry. I hope that I can learn to deal with my anger, but since, like, cos I've grown up being so angry, like a naughty, like, child, basically, that's just the way I am. It's 8.50 a.m. Hello, what can I do for you today? Oh dear, bless him. Right. What, he's cold or it's cold? Oh, right. All right. Oh, OK. Well, that, tell you what, then, let, let's close all the schools. In fact, let's close all the shops as well. So I assume he's therefore just going to refuse to leave the house all day. So, OK, thank you for ringing and telling us, and we should obviously mark him as a truant. Molly's arrived for school, but she's not in her uniform. I didn't want her not coming to school, so I just thought, uh, tell me in what uniform, your mum doesn't know where you are. Is there a possibility that, with your wonderful stock up there, we could sort out a uniform for Molly Lee today? She did stay at home last night and she hasn't got a uniform. Cheers. Yeah, they saw you out with something. Oh, have you spoken to mum? Do you want to? What's going on, Molly? 
Can we sit down? So what's going on? She had an argument with Mum. Right. And she, she jumped out the window. And she just went and didn't tell Mum where she was. I was okay. reported her missing. Right. That's why the police have now come in. Come on. You'd do that, wouldn't you? If it was your daughter. Yeah? You spoke to you haven't spoken to Mum today, no? We all argue, Molly. We all argue with our parents. I know you've got things going on at home. Me and Mum just clash all the time. My mum had three kids under the age of three. So, and then obviously she was a single parent. She did well. But I suppose she's probably really worn out by now. Yeah, she's a good mum, but I'm just not a good daughter. <laughs> Are you taking one down? To the police is working. Oh, well, I'll take her there, yeah. Molly, Molly, taking all the stuff For the last few months, Molly's been living with her mum and her sister Charlotte has been living with their dad. No, just listen to me. We don't see each other, really, anymore. I look out for her if she's, like, in trouble or whatever, or in school. You come see Molly? Yeah. So over But she don't want to come out here. She just takes things to heart more than what I do. I'm not going. Calm yourself down, all right? I'm going to sit in with you. You just calm yourself down, you just tell the truth, OK? After a few questions, the police leave. How was it shaking she was? Um, they were really, really nice and just said, look, you know, we were out looking, we had three police cars out looking for you. It could have been helicopters, dogs, just a phone call to tell someone mm. that you're OK. So it's just really kind of a bit of a wake up to wasting their time. Right, and just calm. Don't get the arm. Tina's persuaded Molly to call her mum to try and make up. Deep breath. Relaxation. No, it's Molly. Am I allowed home after school? No. Can't you just tell me now, please? Well, what's going on after school? Mm hmm. Yep. Bye. Just picking me up at half three. Right, sounds that good? Yeah, but she's just going to go mental at me. Oh, I'm Molly, not standing. Molly, listen, look at me. Right, why is she going to go mad at you? Because she is, because I know when she's angry. Right, just really listen to me, right? It's really going to be hard, but you've just got to try and talk to your mum without getting into an argument. I'm not really affectionate with, like, my parents. Lately, I don't really tell them anything about my life. So, I don't think they really care at this moment. I think they've given up caring, that's what they say. But there's no point in caring anymore because I just chuck it back at them. Your mum and dad, Charlotte and Molly, do love you, didn't they? They both love you, otherwise they wouldn't be bothered about you, would they? I know they love me, but they don't really... Sh I don't know, they don't show it to me as much as they used to from when I was younger. That's probably what drove us all apart. They had their new lives, so me and Charlotte took our new lives. Where's your future going, Charlotte? Because I'm desperate for you to be in lessons and doing the right thing, but your behaviour is appalling. And everybody else is going ahead, getting good qualifications, good references, and we'll get good opportunities. And you're throwing yours away. Well, there was my mum and dad, and then they had Tegan, me and Molly, and then mum and dad broke up. My dad got this woman and had my brother and... Danny and Harry. Um, my mum met a man, Nige, my stepdad, and I had Freddie and Mimi, and then he already had two kids as well. Like, I always feel like it's just two families, but I don't feel like fit in anywhere because I'm not close with either of them. Have you told mum and dad this? Is that arguing? Charlotte, stop. No, no, stop, 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 stop. stop. Don't leave me alone. Hey, I'm not being aggressive to you, Charlotte, or rude in any way. When any young person throws away their potential at whatever level that is, it's frustrating. With Molly and Charlotte, it's even more frustrating when they're so bright. You know, they could, they could achieve anything they set their mind to. 
What can we do to make this better, Charlotte? I'd like nothing better to be seeing you at your prom, knowing that you've done the best you can. But you've got to let us. That just means just behave. Just be normal. Just be the Charlotte who, when she's in a good place, is fantastic. Because I know you don't like the confrontation. I know you don't, because nobody does. Nobody in their right mind does. For some young people, there is a lack of a mechanism that allows them to learn how to cope. They live their life in a climate of argument. They live their life in which you have to push and push and push to be that person who gets what you want. And if you don't push, you don't get. Well, all they do is they transfer that behaviour into school. I say things that I don't mean. Well, of course you do. We all do that when we're angry, because you want to hurt the person that's upsetting you, didn't you? I always tell my husband every day to um, chuck him out every day. I do. There's the back door. You don't like it. Off you go. So, you know, I think Mum knows when you say horrible things, you don't really mean them things. Right, so you've got to meet Mum at half three. Yeah? Be calm. Calm. Yeah. Come and see me tomorrow, yeah? Yeah. Thanks, Miss. Yeah. Thanks, on, Miss. Then. I think I've just been a counsellor all day today. Don't talk to anyone, Tammy. She doesn't talk to anyone. Oh. It's difficult, really. Well, you've got to see it from both points of view, haven't you? You know, and they don't tell you the full story, do they, of what's gone on? It's not that their parents don't care. It's not that their parents aren't decent parents, but maybe their relationship with their parents is a bit fractious, is a bit difficult. And as a parent, I work very hard to avoid that in my family environment. So therefore, when I do see children, I think, oh, you must be going through that constantly. There's an element then of sympathy for it, and you think, that's just not fair. Morning. Either go into your lesson, or come and sit here until the end I of the break. I don't feel very well. And that's why I went to Miss Turner, but she won't give me any tablets. If you're unhappy with the service Mrs Turner's provided, Mrs Turner will ring your mother and ask your mother if she wishes something else to happen. Yeah, she's rang my mum already. Well, there you are then. At the end of the day, as much as I feel like I am your parent, I am actually not, OK? So, therefore, I can only do... Because I've got a really bad this. headache. Right. Hello? Right, OK. Well, I've got some here. I'm giving Molly a strip of aid which she will walk round to you. Okay. I am an eternally hopeful person. I believe that every young person has within them the chance to get it right. There has to be... Listen, how many tablets have to be in that strip when you get to Mr Turner? Eight unpopped tablets. You don't understand why I'm being so serious, don't you? Yeah, because you can get sued. I've seen Year 11s who have done nothing, Sorry. nothing at all in terms of work, all the way through 7, 8, 9, 10, and then suddenly in January of Year 11 have decided, actually, do you know something? I want a life, I want a future, I want to work, and have committed to it at that point, and have spent three months working or suddenly passed their GCSEs because they could do it. There is no such thing as a lost person. It's Remembrance Day. Molly's sister Charlotte is in double science with Dr Nicholson. This silence is all about just paying respect to people and actually having been to the World War I battlefields, it's a really quite humbling thing when you see a monument with like 75,000 people's names carved all over it. They're people they never found. Okay, you stand behind your places, please. to play harder than but you've got nothing to help you
Okay, <laughs> you are right. <laughs> we, we could have been standing there for the rest of the day. It's, it's really respectful. <laughs> Miss Wonkin, how are you? Yeah, I'm all right. How are you? Joyous. Really? You've got an empty room. The day is still young. Good morning. Report, please. Molly has now been on report to Mr Drew for three weeks. Maybe what some young people lack is adult figures in their life who are just honest with them, who just tell them it's straight, who listen to them. The figure who they will just think, OK, fine, we know where we are, we know what's going on, and we know what the decision is, and once the decision's made, that's it, and we'll live with it. And that's kind of how I see it. The point where they can have that solidity, where they can know exactly what's going on. It's three o'clock. Why are you picking on me blazing, though? Molly's in a supervised revision class. Cross? Yep. For what? I'm wasting my time. What the hell, sir? You're an absolute idiot. You're a prat, mate. At the end of the slot, I marked her report with a cross because she was arguing back with me. Now she's called me an idiot and a prank. Do you want me to go and get her? Yes, please. Yeah. Right. Sorry, I was, I was trying to sign in and sort out the tensions. Yeah. How am I ever supposed to make your life a better thing? How am I ever supposed to help you? Well, How... um, no. I'm sorry, I thought I was speaking. Sorry, but... Do you want me to try to help you or not? Well, yeah, well, obviously, but I'm not happy with there. people talking to me the way that they're talking to me at the minute, to be honest. I would suggest to you that the pot calling the kettle black is the phrase that springs to mind. Do you know what that means? Not a clue. Do you know what an arger is? A what? In olden days, when people used to have huge, you know, big metal stoves and things where they burnt wood inside oh, and they sorry, had their big metal pot on top. No, you haven't. They had a big metal pot on top. I see him more than I'd see my friends at school. I'm with him so much. But sometimes I just can't deal with him sometimes. It's just his voice just sometimes goes in through this ear and out the other. So utterly rude and dismissive. Two members of staff. It's ridiculous. Oh, my God, sir. Like I got annoyed. I got annoyed about back. the fact... No, no, no. Can you listen to me now? I got annoyed about the fact that he told me what to do in my study support. I would be perfectly happy That's fine. if he did. I went and did it in the end, so why am I getting told off at this? Because I should imagine that during the conversation that you adopted that incredibly rude... Well, so I was the only one being rude, sir? Why are you turning around and talking to my colleague while I'm talking to you? Because I don't want to listen to this. I know you don't, but I want you to listen. But I'm fed up of listening. OK, and I'm, I'm fed up of your home. behaviour. Can I have my report? I'm fed up of your Can behaviour. Can I go home? A bunch of idiots. I'm actually so fed up of this school, you're all idiots. Do we not try hard enough for you? Uh, yeah, but you just don't listen to me. As soon as Mr Ringshaw comes along, tells you a load of awe. Oh, it's telling awe. Oh, God's sake. Okay, when you're ready to come back in, come back in. Can I have my report? I'm going home. Not until I've finished talking Why? to you. Why? Because this is my time, obviously. Okay, I'll just ring your mum and I'll make it my time. Oh, my God. Oh, my days. Give me my report, I'm going home. No. Give me my report. I'm not sure how that works on your friends, but it doesn't work on me. I wasn't even being naughty. I did all my work. You didn't even look. Can you give me my report, please? OK. I would like you to recognise... I don't care. After it happened, I come to see you mm -hmm. because I wanted to tell you mm -hmm. what had happened, but Miss Betts was sitting here and you can even ask her. Okay. And she said that you was teaching. Which I was. So it wasn't like I was just trying to have an argument with him. Right. I was coming here to ask you if I could have five minutes to sit okay. with you. Fine, fine. And if I'd been here, then that would have happened. Well, you're looking at me like I'm some sort of prat. I absolutely am not. If I thought that, <laughs> would I still be trying to have the conversation I'm not being with horrible, you? But about something, but that doesn't matter because... How does it not matter? No, can you just hurry up? I'm really fed up of talking about it. Perhaps we'll talk about it tomorrow. You mean you don't swear as much uh, as me? Don't need your comment or input in any way, shape or form. I'm sorry, but I am not, on No, side. no.
Vicky always talks about children having lots of doors to go through. And every time they get something wrong, they close another door. And I always see that with someone like Molly. She would slam every single door shut in her own face until there were no doors and she was trapped in the room, to be honest. Your total inability to have manners shames you. So we've got to constantly running around the room, pushing the doors back open again. And then she'll shut them again. But eventually we'll hold them open by a crack and they won't shut and they'll be fine. So she can do whatever she wants to do. But not on her own. Not on her own. So what happens is you get a graph at the end of the year and every single one of these dots represents a student. All these people in this area here, what do they all have in common? And do you know what they all have in common from last year? They're all naughty. <laughs> you are at the moment at risk of significantly underachieving. You are. It's because I'm stupid. No, you're not stupid. You're stupidly behaved. There's a very big difference. You're not stupid, Molly. Oh, yeah. What? <laughs> You're not walking around all day like that. Why? <laughs> you know exactly why. Go and take it off. Oh, sir. We spend so much time together. Always together. Always, like, since I was younger, I don't like the ch changing. I'm the sort of person that likes, like, I like structure in my life. I don't know, I just, I would like structured things. That is much better. In my humble opinion, as your deputy head teacher and your report to, <laughs> that is much better. Much more natural, much more you. Thanks, sir. Thank you very much. To be honest with you, most of my focus in terms of the lease has been on Molly over the last two weeks because Charlotte's been doing her mock exams. Yeah. Molly is much, much more settled over the last three weeks. You know, really fought her really hard for like two, three weeks, such like she's She's much more settled. I would say with Molly at the moment, it'll all go wrong now, but I kind of feel we're just about getting somewhere with her. Charlotte Lee? Right, here we go. From top, top mark Wait. to bottom mark, OK? Are you ready? Well done, Charlotte. You were one mark. I've got the top mark! I, I don't know how you did it, but really, really well done. One mark. One mark off a C. Off a C. One mark off a C, yeah. sir. Well done. Brilliant. Yeah. Um, Oh, really Nicola, <laughs> Charlotte, 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 yeah, take great. stock from that. In other words, take encouragement from that. Yeah. She did it outstandingly well. She got a C grade in her science mock exam. One of them. Isn't that frustrating? A kid who's hard in her lessons, who's got all those brains, mm. but just is choosing to be just an her, absolute madam with them. Charlotte, you're not supposed to be eating. Oh, come on, I did nearly get a C. Yeah, but you're still not supposed to be eating. Charlotte, no more, all right? Because you'll, you'll ruin it and you should be feeling quite proud of yourself. Don't spoil it. Right? What about Molly? Do you think she looks up to you as you're her big sister? Everyone says she does, but I don't know. I think we're pretty much the same, really. Who's the brightest? Her. Is she brighter than you? Yeah, she's very clever. You're clever, though. Yeah, but she's, like, proper, proper clever. But she just don't use it. What do you think Molly will do after school? I don't know. I think she wanted to be a lawyer. I don't know. I, mean, I don't know anymore. Can you see yourself going to university? Hopefully. It depends how, um, if I end up even finishing school or something. I don't know. I might not even make it till year 11 yet. Yes. Now this is a song. Job is it's to be in steps. I wish I could dance like I used to have a steps poster. I was, um, about Are you singing? I'm educating him in my world of music. You know what? I saw a bit of graffiti today. It says, Miss Cadigan's a 40 year old virgin. Did it? Did it really? <laughs> it's written right near where it's the bottom. You know where the, the medicine through time boxes are? Oh, it's written yeah. on one of those there. Miss Cadigan was a 40 year old virgin. <laughs> You're there. You're there. Excellent. What's the one that's on that box that's been on that box forever? Oh, is it Mr. Drew Sucks Cock or something? Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it is a good song. Wait. Baby, you're a firework. <laughs> See, it's like a
with my role models. Okay, I like the man who stood in front of the tank in 1989 in Tiananmen Square in China. I think he's absolutely great. Aung San Suu Kyi, the Burmese democracy anti-dictator leader woman. I think she's absolutely great. I always think people like golfers and snooker players who, when they commit fouls or they do things wrong, they admit it and they hold their hands up. And even if the referee hasn't seen it, I always think that's very, very good. Any young person who does something bad but then says, do you know, fair cop, sir, I'm absolutely in the wrong, you're absolutely right, I don't think I'll do that again, and then lives up to it. Parents who bring up teenagers and who make sure their teenagers stay on the straight and narrow by basically saying to their kids, just do the right thing in life and don't argue with everyone all the time, they're my heroes. Is that enough? Or do you want some more? No, excellent, good. We all remember certain teachers, don't we? What do you think students would remember about you in 20 years' time? I hope that they will, when they are, you know, doing their 10-year reunion or their 20-year reunion or such like, I hope that they will think to themselves that I was always prepared to do what needed to be done to help them to succeed. And that as an adult, they will look back and go, actually, yeah, I didn't quite like it when he said that. I didn't quite like it when he said that. But at the same time, it was the right thing to say. Oh, babe, wait, ab, ab, ab. Do I look sophisticated? Yes, Mum. Do I look cool? Yes, Mum. <laughs> Do I look like a missing bird? Yes. Yeah. Thanks. Miss, do you know who Mr. Drew is? Good morning, how are you? Excellent. What is a teacher? Is a teacher just somebody who stands in front of a class and teaches history or IT or maths or English? Well, no. We are responsible for one of the most important things that exists in any society. We are being sent some parents' angelic child. doesn't mean they are angelically perfect, but fundamentally that's their baby, that's their child. And therefore, quite rightly, society holds us to account. You know, it doesn't matter how many times the kids get it wrong, they've got it, you've got to help them get it right. Ah, why is Molly sat at my desk on my phone? This morning, I left my phone on the bus, but I know what bus it was. Mm. Sir, I haven't got my tyre. Then I shall find you a tyre. Because I, I slept on my auntie's house last night. Right. That's why I got a bus. Right. Stupid thing. OK, OK, stop. You were being nice. Just because I'm here doesn't mean you have to start arguing, Molly. OK? Try to be nice with me as well. Sometimes I think, like, what will I do if I'm on the job and someone annoys me? I'm, I'm not really going to be able to stand there and say, like, swear at them or tell them to go away. Because people would just, like, sack you and just get someone else, wouldn't they, in real life? How are things with Mr Drew, then, at the minute? Being getting all the work of him, having a bit of bants, you know. <laughs> Remember to be nice to your mum. Um, mum, I left my phone on the bus this morning. I've got a number, um, but I need to go to lessons, so we... And I know what number bus I was on as well. Would you be able to ring them for me, please? OK, and Mum, I haven't got attention after school. Wait, give me the phone for a second, for that. Wait, Mr Drew, what's this for? Hello, Mr Drew here. I can just... I can confirm all the things she's telling you. I just feel I'll do that just in case, you know. Molly understands, you know, that I have to sometimes do these things. <laughs> OK, all right, no problem, yeah. All right. Bye. Mum's sorting it out. Make, listen to me, seriously. Yeah. Make sure you thank her and be nice to her, OK? Yeah. This could be a, listen, this could be a real moment for you to just, you know, build a few bridges, Molly, you know? When I've Mum been really you. good this weekend. Molly could do absolutely anything she wanted to do. Molly, Molly would be a really good teacher. Molly would be a fantastic teacher. She would have great empathy and understanding with young people. She'd be great at anything whatsoever which channelled her talents. Oh, sir, look. You look sophisticated. Yes. <laughs> yes, you do. Changes to children's behaviour is made by little steps. They don't change overnight. It's ridiculous to think they're going to. Let me try and find you another tie. She'll do it in the end on her own, but she's not there yet and she's a long way from being it, so everyone's got to keep pushing the doors back open again until eventually she decides to do it herself. Hey, 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 hey. Molly, be good. All right, that's all right. I'll see you at break Real, time. Break time, where are you going to be? Are you in here? I'm always here for you. Thanks, Mr Drew.
next week. This is the very beginning of the very end. Thoughts turn to leaving school. One day I'd like to marry and have kids. I'm not like other people. I mean, someone think I'm weird, other think I'm extraordinary. This is a horrible hurdle for you to get over, but it'll make you a man. In your living, you're a big fish in a small pond. Good luck, guys. But then you're going to go out there and be a small fish in a massive pond. That's the thing. You never know what happens in the future. Well, next Thursday from nine, it's the last Educating Essex. If you've missed any of the episodes thus far, go to 4 od channel 4com and you can catch up at your leisure. Next on 4, it's back. The no-holds-barred conversation about teenage sex, the joys, the phobias, the pain, the heartbreak. All coming up.